So we've been talking a lot about this very kind of, um, I guess, very grounded in nature and thinking about the role of these substances in the natural world. And um, a few years ago, you gave a wonderful talk at this conference called Breaking Convention on, I think it was the idea that DMT might be, I think you said, a neurotransmitter for the guy in mind, you know, thinking of its role in kind of ecosystems, um, which, I, which I really enjoyed. And it was actually that talk that inspired me to give it a go. And I'd had experience with psilocybin. Um, and in my own work, I'd been kind of working on the, basically the idea that consciousness arises through life rather than through nervous systems. So I'm very open to plant intelligence and the idea that, as we've been talking about, the natural world acts on us in ways that we're not usually sensitive to. So I went into the experience very much expecting to see very kind of naturalistic, perhaps some kind of fractally, you know, things that seemed kind of intelligent. Um, and I, I personally was not steeped in science fiction growing up, unlike, unlike yourself. And lo and behold, I was immediately, I basically had a classic kind of alien abduction experience, <laughs> kind of experientially, mm -hmm. of entities, suddenly I'm in a spaceship and they're telepathically communicating with me. They seem to be inspecting my body. Um, and yeah, it's, it was the most unexpected thing I've ever experienced in my life. And there was no explaining it away with um, priming of saying, ah, I knew to expect this, I, you know, because I was expecting something completely different. Um, so I, th I think for me, there's a real um, fascinating disconnect here, I guess, between the, on the one hand, the, the kind of ethnopharmacology and thinking about the natural role of this stuff and the experiences which can seem so so incredibly otherworldly, right? Um, is that, I feel like in your work, you straddle these two things. Is that something you find hard to reconcile? Well, uh, kind of, I, I think, I mean, you, you, you confer, you don't have to be a science fiction fan to have right. these alien otherworldly experiences, you know? I mean, you just don't. Lots of people never read science fiction in their lives and they'll be plunged right into this kind of alien abduction experience. You know, James, I think we're in territory here where the most honest answer is we don't know what the hell is going on. <laughs> you know, it may be that there, you know, uh, like if you look at psilocybin in uh, uh, relation to some of the work on mystical experiences, transcendent experiences and this sort of thing, there's something about brain architecture that when these circuits are activated, you have mystical experiences, you know, which you're going to interpret through, uh, or, you know, mystical as a charged word, obviously, we can call it mystical. And you're going to tend to filter those experiences through whatever you're spiritual framework is you know if you're a buddhist you'll have one kind if you're you know a catholic monk you'll have another kind obviously every all these experiences that we have on psychedelics they have to come to us through a number of cultural filters as well as personal filters but i think the point is that i'm getting to is somewhere in this neural architecture of ours we have these neurons that when tweaked in a certain way will reliably yield a mystical experience you know uh, or a transcendent religious experience which i wouldn't necessarily call the alien abduction encounter a religious experience but it may be that there's circuitry there that elicits this experience reliably when you tweak it in a certain way and maybe this is a uh, what is this, you know? Is this an anticipation of death, possibly? Because it, you know, we all know that's up, that's up ahead for everybody. And I think, you know, the, the, the uh, descriptions of near-death experience, as Strassman's pointed out, and, and mystical experiences and abduction experiences, there's a lot of overlap with these things. And it may just be that built into the nervous system, you know, are the circuits that can trigger these kinds of experiences. You put the right key into that lock and unlock it, and that would be psilocybin or DMT, then there you are. And it's just, it's just, I don't know if there's a, a 
you know, mystery behind it's just the way it is, you know, yeah. it's just how we're put, it's just how we're put together, you know. Yeah. Um, but is, if, is there something beyond that, that's significant, you know, I would like to think so.